welcome to Deeply Rooted. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and I am so happy to be here with you. I share my journey here um, because I think that there are times when you need to know that you're not alone. I know I need that too. And it's a good reminder that we are spiritual beings having human experiences and that we can share together knowing that it is, it is the life. The lovely road ahead. Here's a quote from a book called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert Persig. I don't want to hurry it. That itself is a poisonous 20th century attitude. When you want to hurry something, that means you no longer care about it and want to get on with other things. I remember a time when our family had to work together to handle even the simplest of tasks. Homework, dinner, doctor's appointments, which all used to fall on mama's shoulders. Now daddy had to take on more. The children needed to make sacrifices. The season lasted for quite a while. And at the beginning it was chaotic and difficult and everyone was cranky and bristly. But as we noticed the season drawing to a close, we each kind of held on to the days more tenderly. What a bond we had built. Think about a time when that was true for you. Well, I'm happy to say that I am back in a Montessori classroom. And in Montessori, also in Reggio and uh, Waldorf-style classrooms, um, all three of those uh, classroom styles usually have an outdoor environment component. And that is actually where I started, was in the outdoor environment for Montessori. Um, It was the reason why I fell in love with Montessori, because I really... Um, I I just loved it. I could see how it was so helpful for the students to have a classroom option, even if they were working on something like math or reading, um, that they could go outside and have that fresh air um, as part of their um, classroom experience. So um, it's kind of uh, lovely to be back full circle in that space after having gone through um, uh, the Montessori certifications and taught now in different states and done some online work and really going into it not so, I don't even know if the word is rigid, but just so um, concerned that I was doing it right, um, that there was a right way to do it. Um, But really letting the classroom be the third teacher and and I heard someone say this um, when we were doing an orientation before um, this, the semester started about um, if you're not almost feeling a little bit bored, you're doing too much. <laughs> and I remember thinking that that turns education on its head, right? Because um, you think you must be turning things out and almost to the on the verge of entertaining the students but the reality is a prepared environment um, allows for the students to if you're for lack of a better way of saying it entertain themselves and your desire is simply to keep the peace if you will not only externally but internally um, because it really does affect the classroom when you're not uh, internally at peace and also um, you know just to be that um, touch point of safety and security that they know that that they you know can freely enjoy the classroom knowing that there is someone there to make sure they're safe so anyway um, that caused me to start to look for 
new books that are in the marketplace um, on this idea of being outside. And I came across this book called I Love Dirt by Jennifer Ward. And it is so lovely. I'll take a picture of it and put it over on my Instagram account. Make sure and follow me over there under um, at Robin Norgren. Um, but the book uh, subtitle is 52 Activities to Help You and Your Kids Discover the Wonders of Nature. Let me read you the introduction. There is nothing more joyful and inspiring to watch than children discovering the world around them. Whether they're collecting fallen leaves, rolling down grassy hills, or playing in the waves at the beach, seeing that wide-eyed wonder in our children is such a gift. Regardless of the joys that nature can bring, there has been much disturbing press about the lack of quality time that children today spend outdoors, along with startling research and statistics that point to the detrimental effects this nature deficit can cause. And we see it ourselves. Our children rush around with too little time, too many gadgets, and too many distractions seeking a place to play that is closest to an electrical outlet. But it doesn't have to be this way. I Love Dirt is a call to parents, educators, and caregivers to help recover one of the greatest joys in childhood, spending time outdoors in nature. In five minutes, you can take children outside and turn their world around. And this book will help you do that. These 52 open-ended activities offer a wealth of creative ways to give the outdoors back to your children. Be it cloud racing, stargazing, making a play date with a puddle, or building a bird feeder out of snow, I Love Dirt will encourage your kids to explore, discover, giggle, exercise, wonder, and have a blast with nature. Sidebars and prompts are used throughout this book to help you explain basic science and nature concepts to children. All you need to get started is a desire to open the door to a healthy relationship with nature. And soon your little ones will also discover that spending time outdoors offers the perfect opportunity to enjoy relaxation, quiet time, reflection, and insight. The outdoors is at your fingertips, be it a balcony, a backyard, a porch, or a playground. It is a place just waiting to be enjoyed and discovered. Time in nature is cost-free, as are the activities in this book, but the benefits will stay with your children for a lifetime. Together, we can give the young minds of today, of our future, the greatest gift of all, an awakened awareness of the outside world. So... That being said, I will, over the next few episodes, share some of the activities in the book, and I will also share um, what's going on in my classroom as well. So make sure and check out my Instagram account, and also check out my blog over at, um, what is it called? <laughs> Brightchildmontessori.com. Well, I wanted to add a new series to my podcast kind of sharing with you um, my life as a, um, a creative entrepreneur and also as a teacher, um, just to give you some insight into um, what it's like on a daily basis to kind of hold space for those both of those things as well as being a parent of a teenager and a wife. And um, because I um, have been doing business as a creative entrepreneur for 14 years now. And uh, it's kind of crazy to say that out loud, but it is a, um, it's just been an interesting um, thing to think about this year. Um, and I joined a group for the first time of other creatives. I shouldn't say for the first time because I've done it before, but I guess for the first time at 14 years uh, of, uh, of business and, and hearing um, the beginnings of what it feels like to start on this journey and to trust yourself. Um, and I just thought, wow, I should probably share a little more about what it feels like at this point and also to share some of my stories of how I got here. So what I thought I'd do is just give kind of a little simple um, 
journal entry, if you will, of my first week of doing that. And um, then as time goes on, I'll share some, um, hopefully of interest to you, just some ups and downs and ins and outs of that throughout the course of my year. So this entry I wrote on January 2nd, 2022. Yesterday was a good practice of going more deeply into rest. I took down and put away the indoor Christmas stuff, reorganized my daughter's room, and did the usual animal and light housekeeping duties and watched outtakes on the office DVDs. When I got tired, I took a two hour nap. I made food and ate when I was hungry. I went to the gym with my husband then picked up my daughter from her sleepover. I started on my membership program with Daniel Laporte, and I figured out how to use the scanner and scanned my camera patterns. They look awesome. I think I might sew one of them today. January 2nd, excuse me, January 3rd. After picking up my grocery order, I decided that today I would recreate the sewing kits that I have designed with the camera theme. Thinking couch pillow or neck pillow, it actually got me thinking this morning about a U-shaped pillow. I signed up for a vision building course for creative businesses, which starts January 9th. And all the while throughout the day, making meals and troubleshooting issues with my Montessori sales. As I think about this year in sales, since I have retired online clothes selling, I think products like the sewing kits and the journal kits will be my push this year. I start my new job today in the outdoor environment at a classroom in a school I used to work at, and I feel really good about it. January 4th. Can days really be filled, this filled with ease? Getting up, quiet time, getting ready for work, drop my daughter at school, work and enjoy it, pick up my daughter, head home, have a snack, watch a show, craft, exercise, get dinner ready, a bit of TV and then to bed. Yes, it can. I finished the prototypes on the camera sewing kits and I need to write up the descriptions and photograph them properly. January 5th. I left work yesterday feeling like, well, here's my job now. Cold, old, I tripped on a basket and fell straight to the ground. And well, just not so great. Went to Goodwill, bought some sweaters because it was very cold outside. I forgot about that part about being in an outdoor classroom. Finished an excerpt of my fiction book on my phone and got this crazy long email from a woman starting a Montessori school. But this morning feels better and I found my process art package that I purchased and I'm going to start implementing that in the classroom. And I also plan to go to the library and pick up some books. Yesterday I had a dental appointment that got canceled and my daughter had practice after school on her half day so I didn't need to get her a ride. January 6th. I left work again, feeling so many feelings of defeat. From the playground monitor feeling of my job to not feeling good in any of my clothing. I've put away the notion of more sewing kits for now because it just feels too complicated. And I'm moving into the idea of my journaling kits and creating a PDF version of them. I think it might even work for teenagers. I had to, re to do a return at Walmart, so I went to the one near the school and not realized that not only do I have a Sprouts next door, but also a Trader Joe's down the street. And at Walmart, they had my favorite pants, clearance priced at $5 went by the 
Goodwill at Queen Creek to look for some items to put in the classroom. And I happened to find a kimono, kimono that I really love. And I really am thinking more about Reggio and Waldorf and how to create that within my classroom. January 7th. I got a vision for the next week in the outdoor classroom, which includes treasure maps, rocks, and magnifying glasses. Mostly it's about working with the curvature of the space, the community feeling of the tables, and finding out whether or not there is an actual budget. This year I want to stay in the sentiment of less is more. Because I observe even this space, with minimal amount of items to intrigue and invite, the students have found ways to delight themselves. And now it is up to me to find ways to enhance this even more without the space becoming teacher run. I know that I've bought some STEM lessons in the past and I'm sure this would be a nice addition that I can roll into the days of the week, one at a time. This year, I'd like to start throwing out an idea for a journal prompt that I would love for you to um, sit and write about as well, if you feel so inclined. So today's prompt is, write about Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon is a time when I feel very pleased or very anxious. As a teacher, I find this time is when dread will start to creep in. If I am being honest, the time is a gauge as to whether I actually rested or whether I spent the prior day and a half prepping for the following week in the classroom. I have a love-hate relationship with teaching. I love teaching. I love planning. I love enjoying the students' excitement of exploring new adventures in learning. What I don't love is how all-consuming it feels and how there never seems to be any budget. Like ever. The budget is my paycheck. Which is fine until it's not. Because I truly feel that if we can spend money on extravagant meals and cups of coffee, we can pour a bit into making a classroom environment that is filled with more than just worksheets. So Sunday afternoon is the marker of whether it will be a peaceful week. And as I continue to make the choice to teach, I find myself getting better at relying on what I bring to the space in my person whether or not the classroom is stocked the way I prefer. Well, I hope you're enjoying this unconventional format of a podcast. Um, I really do enjoy crafting um, something a little bit different than maybe you're used to hearing. Um, because really, do we need another podcast? <laughs> so I really thought long and hard of what I could bring to the space. And I really do hope that you're enjoying it. Um, and as always, you know, it takes time and energy to do such things. And so if you find value in this, please make sure and share it. And um, you do have an option as well to support my podcast. So make sure and look into that as well. And you can always buy my items over on um, my uh, website at robinnorgren.com. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support.